Oh yeah, so we, gotta, we were considering traditional algorithms, right? I think we did enough of that. My point with the algorithms are, you can think about, you can, you can get right answers with the algorithm, and it looks like you're thinking in a particular way, when in fact you're not. And so what does it mean then to do activities to really build additive thinking and multiplicative thinking? And um, honestly, I'm not going to do a whole lot with that with you now, but you're going to do it all week long. So I'm setting the stage. I'm making you hungry. You're like, bring it on. I want to know. And we'll, we'll do more of that in your, in your breakout sessions. What I'd like to do is to look at a student using the traditional algorithm. Um, this uh, gal's name is Michaela. I think if I hit this, it's not going to play right now. Yes. So this is Michaela. Michaela's a seventh grade student. A little bit of history. She had struggled in math up your fourth grade. Her mom knew Kim, who raised her hand earlier. Remember, I worked with Kim early, early, early on. And Kim had Michaela in fifth grade. Michaela struggled, but could. Michaela could do, struggle, struggle. It was, it was a wow, you worked hard that year. Yes. But could do. Michaela came out of fifth grade. I can do math. I never thought I could. I can do math. This is great. Went on to middle school. Kim lost track of her. Mom calls Kim up in the middle of seventh grade and says, Yeah, not doing so well in seventh grade. Would you tutor Michaela? Kim says, I'm a fifth grade teacher. I don't do seventh grade. Kim's talking to me. She wants me to tutor in seventh grade. I'm like, oh, do it. Do it. This will be fun. Yeah, I'm trying to sort of grow Kim, you know. Let's, let's do more math. It's like, Oh, do it. It'll be great. Kim meets with Michaela. Michaela starts doing a problem. Kim says, would you mind doing that again on the board and let me video you? And Michaela says, sure, whatever. So Michaela starts doing the problem on the board because Kim saw Michaela do something she knew I wanted to see. So she's like, oh, I'm going to record this. I'm so glad she recorded it. So what I'd like you to do is watch Michaela solving, let's see, 0.26 times 24. Can you all just think about that problem for a second? You don't have to do it. You can pull out your cell phone calculator if you want to. But can, can you get some sense of the, the answer? I'd like to see it for a second. It would take me far longer than this meet to get a sense of it. Don't tell the person next to you yet. Not yet. Not yet. So some sense of the answer, you know, is it closer to a half? Is it closer to negative five? Is it closer to a hundred? Is it closer to three thousand? Just kind of some some idea, some reasonable idea of what that would be. Because, because, they're sharing strategies. Because, it's all right, this is great. The reason I ask you to think about the numbers first is that's a really important idea that we're going to talk about all week, is that we really want kids to think through the problem first before we ever superimpose someone else's strategy. Now think about the way we were taught. We were taught exactly the opposite. Here is someone else's strategy. Now show me my work. Right? Here is the algorithm. Now do it. That was the way we were taught. I'm going to say, kids think about the problem, they work with it, they mess with it first, and then we get to more sophisticated strategies. Then I show you the way somebody else thought about it. But not, not before you've messed with it. So everybody kind of has some idea of what this is, yeah? All right, so ready? Here's Michaela. It's going to be kind of quiet at first, so I'll actually probably talk through some of them. <coughs> Can you hear Michaela? Let me see if I turn around. She's not saying a lot right at the first Hey, when you're multiplying fractions, do you move the decimal or... Line them up. When you're multiplying decimals, do you move the decimal or do you line them up? Well, if you're using the algorithm, you move the decimal. What's Michaela doing? Lining them up. So instantly we have a problem, right? Instantly we're really clear Michaela's not quite sure what she's doing. Now it actually works. You can line them up when you multiply, but you're going to have to move the decimal at the end uh, as well. You might actually notice that her, her multiplication facts are correct at this point. And then I do the butt cheek method with the decimal and the cheek method. Okay, what did she just say? The butt cheek method? Here, we don't even say the word butt in my family, and yeah, I've said it more in the last year than ever before because I've played this video. The butt cheek method? So Kim says to Michaela, I gotta see Pam wants to see this. Sure enough, I wanted to see the butt cheek method. Let's see, she's on that second row. You think, what's going to happen now? Okay, so did she already butt cheat the second row? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to add this together. She's actually doing all the multiplication and addition correctly. She has lots of zeros hanging around because of the lining up at the beginning. 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. And then you've got to cheat the So how close is her answer? <laughs> Yeah, the decimal's not in the right spot, like at all. <laughs> so Kim says to Michaela, Michaela, what happens when you need to move the decimal more than twice? And, and Michaela says, oh, you never do. 
<laughs> so my son heard me saying this, and my son went to the same middle school that Michaela did. My son heard me telling the story, and she goes, oh, or he says, Mom, Michaela just does this. I have heard the teachers calling the butt, the butt cheek strategy. I've heard her teach that. And she just says, sometimes there are mutations. <laughs> always going to have two cheeks and oh, can we, let, let's leave that image alone as far as we can. So I'm going to show you this bit and then I'm going to tell you that Kim worked with Michaela for about eight hours. So over a couple weeks she met with her for an hour and then kind of had a break and then met with her for a couple weeks for an hour and then I'm going to show you a final and then on Thursday, come on Thursday, Thursday morning, I will show you Michaela after about those eight hours of work with Kim. Pulling back, remember she had Kim for a whole year so she's able to pull back on some nice stuff from fifth grade. But pulling back and then we'll show you this problem again. You might think about, and I know you guys had a great strategy over here that you were, you were all, I, I would do it this way. But you might think about that problem between now and Thursday. Use the work that you do in your sessions. The kindergarten teacher just went, we're going to do that in our sessions? <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. But we are going to make sure you guys are thinking. You're going to be thinking additively by the end of, of Thursday for sure. So how could we? How could we reason through a problem like that? I would love to have you come with your ideas of how you can actually think through that problem rather than do something memorized. 